Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is part 5 of the airplane tutorial series that I'm doing in this channel and in this part we're gonna make the airplane flight. So let me show you uh, the results of this video. So now we can increase the throttle and we have the controls. So now we can pitch up and basically fly the airplane. As you can see, so in this video we'll basically finish the physics. But before, if you do like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't lose any any new content and without further ado let's start okay so first let's do the drag and to do the drag we need two more informations so I'm here in the airplane component here let's open the set airplane variables because we need to get these informations so the first one we need uh, we need the speed of the airplane in meters per second so to do this uh, let's drag the airplane mesh reference here in the graph and from this we can type get component velocity this one here and from this vector we can drag and type vector length let's get this one here vector length x y and there you go this is basically uh, the velocity of the airplane but this is in centimeters per second and we need meters per second so we need to divide this by a hundred so let's divide here and now we just need to save this in a variable. So let's drag and promote to variable. I will name this speed MPS for meters per second. And now let's just connect this, uh, the execution pin here. And there you go. Now we have the speed of the airplane in meters per second. And the second information that we need is the velocity of the airplane, but this time the vector itself, because we need the direction of the velocity. So to do this, let's go down here, because here we already have the get component velocity. Let's just promote this to a variable. So let's drag and click to promote to variable, and I will name this airplane velocity, like this. And there you go. Now we have all the informations that we need to do the drag. Let's just organize this variable. So speed meters per second, let's make this private and let's put on the airplane category and let's do the same for the airplane velocity. Let's make this private and let's put on the airplane category. There you go. To make the drag, let's create two more variables. So here in variables, let's add one. I will name this min drag coefficient. Let's make this a float. And let's create another one for the max drag coefficient. And now let's create a function to apply the drag. Okay, so let's create the function. So here in functions, let's add another one. I will name this apply drag. So now let's implement this. Okay, so let's start by getting the airplane velocity vector, this one here. This is basically the direction that we are going, right? We need to apply the drag in the opposite direction. So let's invert this vector. To do this, we just need to multiply this by minus 1. So just add a multiply node and right click on the second pin here and convert to float single precision. And now let's just put minus 1 here. And there you go. Now we have the opposite vector that we are going, the opposite of the velocity, right? So now let's get the speed in meters per second and let's drag from this variable. And here let's type power, this one here. Let's put two on the second pin like this. And now let's multiply this vector with this value here. And there you go. Now I want to multiply this vector here with the drag coefficient. So I want to lerp between the min and the max drag coefficient. So to do this in the graph, let's right click and type lerp to get the lerp node. Let's put the min drag coefficient in the A and the max drag coefficient in the B. And for the alpha here, let's use the throttle. So let's expand the throttle category and let's get the throttle variable and let's use this as the alpha because as you may remember the throttle goes from 0 to 1 so that's what we need and now we just need to multiply this value here with the uh, return value of the lerp so let's just connect here and there you go now we have the final force now we just need to add this force to the airplane to do this let's drag the airplane mesh in the graph and from this airplane mesh let's drag and type add force add location 
Now let's connect the execution pin. So let me just connect here from the function like so. Of course, the force is this one here, so let's connect here. And the location is the center of mass. So let's drag the com variable here, the center of mass, and let's connect on the location. And there you go. Now let's just organize these variables and function. Let's create a drag category here. So let me just create one here. Let's put the max drag coefficient in that category as well. And of course, let's do the same for the apply drag function. Let's uh, put in the drag category and let's change the access specifier of this function to uh, private, but the mean drag coefficient and max drag coefficient, let's leave this as public. So there you go. Now we just need to call this apply drag function. To do this, let's go back to the event graph and let's call this in the event tick after applying the lift. So let's just drag the apply drag function here in the graph and there you go. Okay, so now that we have the drag, let's create the controls, the pitch, the roll, and the yaw. And to do this, we need to go back to the BP airplane because I'm actually going to use the vehicle movement component for this. So first, we need to enable the arcade controls. To do this, just select the vehicle movement component and here in the tails, scroll down until you see the arcade controls. Here, just expand the torque control and enable the torque control. So for the your torque scaling, let's put 0.5. For the pitch torque scaling, let's put 1. And for the roll torque scaling, I will put 1 as well. And 0.5 on the rotation damping. So let's put 0.5 here. Okay, so now we enable the torque controls here, the arcade controls. Now we just need to use these controls in the event graph. So let's do this. Okay, so now let's go to the event graph of the airplane this one here and let's start by making the yaw because i will use the same keys that i'm using for the steering for the yaw right so let me just um drag all this to the right here so we have more room to work here so here is where i'm going to do the yaw and this is really simple let's just expand this comment here and we just need to drag from the vehicle movement component and here let's type set yaw this node here set your input let's select this let's connect the execution pin and for the your input is the action value of the action uh, event here so let's just drag the action value in the your here let me just add some reroutes like so and of course when we release the key we need to set the your to zero so let me just duplicate this one here let's connect the execution pin let me just add a reroute to this one here and let's drag to the target like this and this time the yaw is zero and there we go this is all we need to do for the yaw okay so now to make the roll and the pitch first we need to create the inputs so let's go back to the folders here let's open input airplane actions and let's create two more actions here so right click and go to input input action let's name this ia airplane roll let's open this and let's change the value type from digital bool to access 1d this one here let's save and close and let's duplicate this airplane row just ctrl d to duplicate and let's name this airplane uh, pitch like this and there you go now let's go back to the airplane and let's open the input mapping context for the airplane so here let's add one more action this action here will be the airplane pitch and for the pitch we need to add two keys the first one is w and the next one is s and i'm using these keys here but of course you can use whatever keys you want right so for the s we need to add a modifier the negate modifier so here in modifiers let's add one and here let's select negate and there you go let's uh, collapse this one here and let's add one more mapping for the row. So here just select the row action, the IA airplane row. Let's expand the row and let's add two keys. The first one is A and the second one is D. So let's just put D here. And same thing for the A, we need to add the negate modifier. So here in modifiers, just add one and let's select negate. And there you go. This is all we need to do for the keys. 
Okay, so let's close the input mapping context here and let's go back to the BP airplane blueprint. So here, let's do the pitch first. Let me just put this here. Let's start by doing the pitch control. And for this, it's really simple. Let's first get the action. So right click and type IA airplane pitch, this one here. Let's expand this and let's get the vehicle movement component to the graph like so. And from this, we can drag and type set pitch input this one here let's do this when we trigger it so let's drag from the trigger pin here and let's connect here for the pitch is the action value so let's just connect the action value here and of course when we release the key we need to set the pitch back to zero so let me just duplicate this one here let's con connect from the completed Let's connect the target and of course the pitch is zero now. And this is all we need to do for the pitch. Let's select this and let's comment here pitch. Now let's do the row and it is basically the same thing. Here let's right click and type IA airplane and let's get the row action, this one here. Let's expand, let's drag the vehicle movement component and from this we can type set row input. Let's connect from the triggered and this first one here needs to be the action value. So let's connect the action value here. Let's duplicate this. Let's connect from the completed, connect the target. And of course the row is zero for the completed. Let's select everything here and let's comment row. And there we go. This is all we need to do for the controls. Okay, so now that we have the controls, we can test to see if this is working. But first, it's really important that we set some physics value here. So let's select the BPC airplane, the component for the airplane. And here, let's, uh, let's set the min drag coefficient and the max drag coefficient. It's really important to set this, don't leave at zero. So for the min drag coefficient, I will put here 0 0.1. And for the max, let's put 0 0.5. And for the drag, this is all. Let's compile and save. And now let's open the physics asset of the airplane. So let's go to here to assets, skeleton mesh, airplane, and let's open this the airplane physics asset. Let's open this here. Let's select the hood body here. This one, the hood, right? So for the linear damping, let's put zero. And for the angular damping, let's put 0.5. Let's just set these values here. And of course, you can set whatever value is better for you. But for me, it's this one. Now we can save and test to see if this is working. And I forgot to say this, but just go back to the airplane, select the, uh, the airplane component. And now let's increase the engine acceleration. So let's put 50 here because now we have drag. So we need more acceleration, right? So just put 50 on the acceleration. Okay, so now let's test this. Let's go back to the map. And I already increased the size of the floor here to look like a runway, right? So let's hit play and let's test the airplane. So let's increase the throttle. And now we have the controls. So let's pitch up. And as you can see, the airplane is flying. So basically the physics is done. So now we can fly the airplane, we can turn, we can yaw, as you can see. So everything is working. Let me just turn here and try to land on this floor again. Let me just turn here. Let's decrease the throttle a little bit. And there you go, a safe landing. So as you can see, the flight is basically done. And this is basically it for this video. As you saw, the flight is basically working. So the next videos will all be about polishing this system with sounds and animations, but the physics is done. So 
If you did like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't lose any new content. And as always, thank you for watching, keep learning, I'll see you in the next video.